This video introduces image receptors used in dentomaxillofacial imaging. Let's start by considering the imaging chain. In order to make a radiographic image, we need an X-ray source, and we need a receptor to capture the pattern of transmitted photons. This receptor may be radiographic film, storage phosphor-based receptors, or semiconductor-based receptors called CCD or CMOS sensors. Following exposure, radiographic film undergoes a chemical processing to make a physical radiographic image that can be handled. Image formation with storage phosphor or CCD or CMOS based technologies involves computer processing to make a digital image. Thus, the latter two technologies are referred to as digital imaging, while as film is referred to as analog imaging. This video will focus on the use of CCD and CMOS based technologies in dentomaxillofacial imaging. At the UCLA School of Dentistry, we use CMOS sensors from XDR. As dental students, this is what you will use to perform imaging on your patients. The front side of the sensor is white and faces the X-ray source. The edges of the sensor are rounded to maximize patient comfort. The sensor has a sleek design and is approximately 5 mm in thickness. This allows ease of intraoral positioning and patient comfort. The white front surface improves visibility and allows you to position the sensor better in the oral cavity. It is important to note that the entire surface area of the sensor does not capture the image. This is because the space is required for some electronic components as we will see in subsequent slides. As a result of this design, there is some so-called dead space between the edge of the sensor and the actual start of the imaging capture chip. With the XDR sensor, the dead space at the corded end of the sensor is approximately 2 mm. This allows us to better capture the area of the canine premolar interproximal region, which is a critical region that we capture on bite-wing radiographs. It is also important to recognize that the active surface area, the size of the digital image produced, varies between different sensors, even though all sensors may be the same size 2 or the size 1 sensor. This is an important feature that plays into your decision as a consumer of CCDs. The data captured by the imaging chip in the sensor is transmitted to a computer via a cable and a USB connection. If the sensor is not handled properly, the connection of this cable to the sensor can fail. With the XDR sensor, this cable connection is reinforced to withstand use and can also be replaced if needed. Fortunately, this has not been an issue for us and perhaps that may reflect the protocols that we have in place for sensor use and handling. So now let's take a look at what's inside the sensors. And we can start by taking a sensor and making a radiographic image of it using another sensor. And as you will note, there's a lot of electronics in there. Next, let's take a look at the internal components and why they matter to you as an end user of a sensor. So packed within this plastic casing is a scintillation layer, fiber optics, CMOS imaging chip, which really is the heart of this technology, and electronics that record the changes that happen in the chip and provide the data that go towards making the radiographic image. So at the heart of this technology is what is called as a CCD or a CMOS chip. These are semiconductors which are NP silicon semiconductors the NP sandwiches. And as a result of this semiconductor design, you get a zone of slightly more positive charge at the NP junction. And this zone of slightly more positive charge will be important as we see in measuring the electron charges that are produced when the sensor is exposed to radiation. So what is the reason for using this CMOS or a CCD chip? The CMOS or CCD chip converts photons to electrons and it provides a way for these electrons to be measured so that they can represent the pattern of photon attenuation and make a radiographic image. Now in order to spatially encode the information that comes from this imaging chip, we need to create pixels. And this is done by making electrodes slightly more positive than their neighbors and to create packets of electron charges as we will see in subsequent slides. With the XDR sensor, this pixel size is 19 microns. The pixel size of a sensor is an important consideration. Using the pixel size, you can calculate the resolution of an image that you can expect to see. A higher resolution image provides more detail. 
Using the pixel size, you can calculate the theoretical resolution of the image from an XDR sensor. And this is 26 line pairs per millimeter. On a practical basis, however, the resolution of the image is much lower than 26 line pairs per millimeter. This depends on the X-ray tube that you use, the size of the focal spot, scatter radiation from the patient, electronic noise within the detector, and so many other elements. Studies have shown that dental sensors provide images with a spatial resolution of approximately 7 to 15 line pairs per millimeter, depending on the vendor and the sensor model. The practical resolution of the XDR sensor is on the higher end of the spectrum. Now let's take a look at the functioning of the sensor. When X-ray photons first strike the sensor, they encounter the scintillator layer. The scintillator layer is made up of a high atomic number element such as gadolinium oxysulfide, which very efficiently converts X-ray photons to light photons. Using a scintillation layer, we increase the efficiency of conversion of X-ray photons to signal. The fiber optic plate minimizes diffusion of the light photons that are produced at the scintillation layer and enhances the image resolution. Light photons that are produced by the scintillation layer will interact with the silicon atoms via photoelectric interaction. The silicon atoms will absorb the light photons and liberate electrons. The electrons are then attracted towards the positive zone in the semiconductor chip, creating a charge packet and a measurable voltage that serves as the signal for that pixel. Sensor manufacturers then use proprietary algorithms to convert this pixel voltage into a numerical value and a corresponding gray scale that can be used to construct a digital image. So to summarize the process, X-ray photons strike the scintillation layer producing light photons. The light photons interact with the semiconductor chip to produce electrons. The electrons then accumulate to form charged packets creating a measurable voltage and a signal for image production. You should also be aware that also different manufacturers may use the same technology. Most vendors have incorporated modifications into the sensor design and into proprietary algorithms to make the image. All of these impact the image quality and is the reason why you have different image quality from sensors from different manufacturers. One of the principal advantages of CCD or CMOS technology is immediate image acquisition. With this technology, there is no need for operator intervention after exposure in order to visualize the radiographic image. As with other technologies, you will be able to adjust the density and contrast and apply image enhancement. This will be a topic in future lectures. It has been estimated that almost 80% of dental offices in the United States use digital intraoral imaging. With its advantages of immediate image acquisition and other advantages provided by digital imaging in general, CCD CMOS technologies are increasing for intraoral imaging. Understanding the basic functioning of this technology is important so that you can become an educated consumer and an educated user. That way, you can select the best product that fits your practice needs and enhance patient care.